This is a short video illustrating how to pack for a hiking campout from Troop 320. You've been provided with a comprehensive pack list from the Troop, and it is a two-page document. We're going to go over some of the items that you need to make sure that you have in order to ensure that they're packed properly and that you have the appropriate equipment for comfort and satisfaction for your trip. It's first important to note that you have a couple of options. Since you will be packing into a backpack, you can either use a dry bag or you can use Ziploc plastic bags for any of this equipment. It is not necessary to go buy uh, expensive bagging materials. These cost about $5 each. These cost near zero and you'll find in your kitchen. Your footwear, you have either an ankle supporting waterproof leather or artificial fiber boot appropriately sized, or you can get an ankle height waterproof shoe in either event. Both of these are satisfactory for a camping experience. When you get out to camp, you may or may not want to have uh, some camp shoes. In this case, these are croc-like uh, shoes, but you could also have old sneakers or something like that that you feel more comfortable walking around. When it comes to clothing, you're going to walk out the door and drive and arrive at the campsite with appropriate gear part of which is going to be on your body. Some of which you're going to have your scout uniform, it's going to have the scout pants included. You're going to want a long or short sleeve shirt depending to wear underneath. I'm choosing a long sleeve shirt for this particular adventure. Uh, you're also going to have either, in this case, artificial fiber socks or wool socks and a pair of sock liners, a hat for sun protection, obviously a belt. When you get to camp, you're going to want to have a set of camp clothes, anything that might have gotten wet on the way, will be taken off and dried if, if possible. You're gonna want at least one pair of spare pants. In this case, I have a, a pair of long john pants, but you could also have sweat pants. Artificial fiber is best. You'll want at least one fleece, another long sleeve shirt. I've opted to have another short sleeve artificial fiber shirt. All of these are artificial fiber. Extra underwear, extra socks. In this case, this is my pair of wool socks. You're also going to want to make sure you have appropriate rain gear. Ponchos are not appropriate for this camp out. You're going to want to have a rain jacket that's compressible and a pair of rain pants that's compressible into uh, appropriate storage. You have a couple of options for your sleeping arrangements. You're first of all you're going to certainly want to have an air pad. Uh, you can also have, you'll need a sleeping bag. In this case, I have a down sleeping bag, which as you can tell is considerably smaller than an artificial fiber sleeping bag. Both are in what are called compression sacks. These straps pull down to make sure that it is considerably smaller than what you're looking at right now. And then you're gonna want an, an air pad to go underneath that for insulation. If you opt to do hammocking, you may or may not want the air pad. That will be a personal selection on your point. Uh, I will show how both of these work. In the case of the down, though it is much smaller, it is also subject to getting wet if you are not careful. So I have a dry bag to pack it into. In this case, my sleeping bag has a, a, a waterproof stuff sack that is compressible. If you don't have a waterproof stuff sack, because they can cost, I would recommend you put a garbage bag inside of a regular stuff sack and then gooseneck it or you know just twist the top around and then that will allow you to have a waterproof container for your sleeping bag. When it comes to dining and cooking you're going to have to bring your personal gear. You can have a spork, a collapsible or non-collapsible but noticeably smaller container, uh, in this case a small bowl, uh, a cup certainly for hot beverages. I opted to bring a scraper as well though that is not absolutely necessary and I have a mesh bag in which to put it. If you put it in something that's too closed like a dry bag or a Ziploc bag, uh, this, these items are going to get wet and maybe moldy. In addition, you have over here your personal gear. This is what you're going to be bringing with you on the camp out. Uh, it, it takes care of so in case I have some medications, I have a toothbrush and toothpaste. You're going to want to have some lip balm, medications if you require them, sunscreen, any other ancillary items. I opted to bring some uh, medicated powder. I think those are good for feet when you get on the, the trail. Uh, I have a uh, artificial fiber towel chamois. And also, please remember to bring your masks and your hand sanitizer. When you do get on the trail, you're going to want to make sure you have extra items that are going to support your comfort. One uh, example is your, your 
uh, lights, you're going to need those, of course. Not everybody will need to bring a compass, but if you have one, then you have the option of leaving it behind if somebody else happens to have a compass. Not everybody in the group needs to have one. The same thing goes for pocket knife, although very often people choose to have one. Uh, in this case, I'm choosing to keep one as well. Always have some rope. Uh, I find 50 feet is usually sufficient. In addition, you might want a whistle, a sewing kit, and this is a, a manner in which I choose to store my duct tape, which is endlessly useful in camping environments. Also a personal first aid or fire kit, I should say. In this case, you don't need a large fire kit, but everybody should have one, and you should be familiar with this. In the case of this fire kit, I have what is called fat wood, which is a fire starter. I also have in a plastic bag uh, some uh, wax-covered uh, fire starters. I have some dryer lint as well, I have a lighter, I have some flint and steel, all of which can be used. You're going to want to bring a personal first aid kit. I have a larger one for personal use because of going on the extra campouts. Uh, you, on the other hand, might just need something smaller. It's something that would fit into a sandwich sized bag with extra uh, band-aids and, and other items. You'll find a list for that in your Boy Scout handbook. Right here we have a collapsible day pack. You're going to be hiking in with a regular backpack, which we'll go over in a moment. But in this case, for the younger Scouts in particular, you may end up leaving your major backpack and then using a smaller day pack. So make sure you have one. Otherwise, you're going to have to either share or have somebody put all their stuff into your backpack or vice versa. Also, bringing a, a tent. Everyone will be responsible for identifying who is going to be tenting with them. If you are using a hammock, that will be personal. In this case, it's a small two-person tent, which weighs approximately six pounds. You don't want to bring a very heavy backpack or a very heavy tent. You're going to have to carry it everywhere. You need to bring at least, at least two Nalgene water bottles. We will provide water treatment capabilities, but those are going to be necessary not just for personal use, but these bottles get filled and are used to support camping and cooking exercises. You have a couple of choices when it comes to your backpack. It's gonna be very important that it fits properly. Uh, people grow and so they're adjustable. In this case, we have what's called an internal frame pack. The internal frame pack is conspicuously lacking all of the framing material, which is all inside of the, the pack itself. It has a variety of pockets. And in this case, we have what's called an external frame pack. The difference obviously being that the frame is is physically exterior to the to the backpack and everything hangs off of that. You have a choice of either one. It's usually a personal preference. Uh, I don't really prefer one over the other so long as it fits comfortably. We'll go over packing some of these momentarily and putting all of these things on. Items which are not obvious are include some strapping. These straps are used to go through some of these external mounting uh, squares here for items that will not fit inside. Think a large sleeping bag, for instance, and we'll show how that works. Uh, you take these straps and you use them to hold onto the outside. Very inexpensive. You can find them at uh, most sporting goods stores or local big box stores. In addition, you're going to need a external uh, pack cover. It's a rainproof cover. If this gets wet while your gear is inside, you're relying on these plastic bags to do the job of protecting them. Don't let it get that far, and it will make your life a lot easier and a lot more comfortable. In addition, you may bring optionally a camp chair of some sort. This is just one example of many. Don't bring the big heavy framed ones that we see at sporting events. This is small and very lightweight, but it's a personal choice to bring one at all. We are now going to show how all of these items are packable and collapse into a much smaller footprint, and then will be packed into these backpacks. In this case, all of the clothing got into the dry bag very effectively, and the hat, which is the last thing, is something you're also going to want to make sure you bring for sleeping. Uh, it's surprisingly cool up in the higher elevations, and it is September, so you want to make sure that you're considering that for your comfort. As you saw from the pictures and before and after, the waterproof compression bag has done its job there. It's considerably smaller. And then the down bag is not only considerably smaller, on top of that, I put inside a dry bag for protection. Here we 
we've managed to successfully compress everything into its small packaging. This is our clothing. This is our fire kit. This is our ancillary components, such as compass and duct tape. Our, our mess kit, our accessible uh, rain gear. This is our toiletry bag. This is the larger of the first aid kits. You will want something smaller. My sleeping pad and my sleeping bag. In this case, I chose the smaller down filled version. This is the optional compressible backpack, two water bottles, a chair, a tent, and I'm going to be using the internal frame pack with the, um, the camp shoes. And then I have the internal frame pack has an external uh, pack cover, which you can buy. So we'll now see how all of this goes into that backpack. Now, other than the chair and the sleeping, the uh, tent, the way that you choose to back to pack your pack is really your own discretion. However, I would make some observations. One, in the top of the backpack, I would recommend putting in things that once you get to camp, you will probably need access to in fairly short order. And instead of finding that, that would be my mess kit and my ancillaries that have things like my duct tapes and, and, and flashlight and the like. Um, then you have the water bottles on either side. You're gonna be using those while you hike. I've got my sleeping gear and my shoes down here on the bottom. If the larger sleeping bag is being used, it will display some of that. The very front, I'm going to want access to my first aid kit and my backpacking uh, pack cover. And then I want immediate and ready access to my rain gear at all times, so I put this in a front pocket that I can grab almost immediately. You'll notice here too that there is lots and lots of room for the crew gear that you're absolutely going to be carrying. So make sure you don't pack this so tightly that you're unable to carry crew gear. You're going to need to carry that crew gear. Next we'll show the fully packed pack. So here's the backpack fully packed and covered. It's important to recognize the value of the backpack uh, cover, rain cover, because these backpacks are not going to be in a tent overnight. You're going to be leaning them against a tree, so you want to make sure you have one of these things. The weight, in this case, uh, excluding water, which is a uh, personal choice, is approximately 25 to 30 pounds. So it's not going to be obtrusive. I know for some of our smaller, younger scouts, they might have some issues, uh, but everybody does. That's, that's kind of the challenge, and you'll find that yours is lighter if you're a smaller person. But this is the finality of, of the backpacking uh, packing process. I'll show you a couple of things to do with the external mounting of items on the external frame pack. If you find yourself with something too large to put inside the backpack, don't fret. You need to make sure you get some straps. Again, $5 at, at a local store. You put them through these uh, and thread them through these uh, square-shaped retention uh, pads here. And then you will use these to strap the item, in this case, let's say a sleeping bag, externally to the backpack. Again, this sleeping bag should be in a waterproof stuff sack, hopefully compressible. And if not a waterproof stuff sack, then simply put the sleeping bag inside a garbage bag, which is nested inside of a non-waterproof compression stuff sack. And that will protect you appropriately. In addition, uh, the value of some of these carabiners can't be overstated. Uh, just hook them on the outside. You may find places for water bottles and other items that you can use to uh, facilitate your camping See, experience. Once the straps are installed, you can mount them onto a sleeping bag or some other item, uh, maybe a tent. If you do have a heavier object, it is recommended to put it towards the top of the backpack, which seems counterintuitive, but in fact, it's much more comfortable to carry than having it pull off the back of your uh, pack. You can see this in some online videos that illustrate that, but you'll find these type of uh, mounting surfaces or straps uh, on every backpack. So hopefully this will make clear what to do when you have uh, what you need. Also make sure that you bring extra garbage bags, etc., some of the other items that are on the pack list. And that concludes our pack demonstration.